that's what Britain is up to, or at least some Britons. They're counting down to the farce of the century, a coronation in 2023. If you thought that was problematic, listen to the details. Apparently, there is an oath of allegiance to King Charles. The church has asked all Britons to take the oath. Correction there, not all Britons, all subjects, which means Canadians must take the oath. So must Australians. And don't forget the island dwellers in the Caribbean. They too must swear allegiance to a man who lives in a castle thousands of kilometers away. Uh, I get what you're thinking. Surely the church does not mean it. It's just part of the long-standing coronation traditions. Well, get ready to be surprised because UK ministers are raring to go. They can't wait to take the oath of allegiance. Transport Secretary Mark Harper is one of them. He thinks it's a fantastic opportunity. The Labour Party thinks it's a lovely idea to involve the people. Their words, not mine. But a fantastic opportunity for what exactly? To be tone deaf? To insult the concept of human equality or to forget that you're living in a democracy? There is only one place for an oath of allegiance and that is the history books. I know it's part of the royal traditions but that does not make it right. If anything, it tells you why the whole institution is problematic and the monarchy realizes this. They're trying hard to make the coronation fit for 2023. For example, it will feature women members of the clergy for the first time. It will also feature leaders from other faiths, namely Jewish, Hindu, Muslim and Sikh. They will all present Charles with coronation symbols. We say full marks for trying, but the truth is you cannot disguise a dinosaur. You can add layers of clothing. You can call it by different names, but none of it changes the reality. And that's what the monarchy is, a dinosaur. Let me tell you why. For all this multi-faith display, the ceremony itself is deeply Christian. King Charles won't promise to defend secularism. He will be promising to defend the Protestant reformed religion, a.k.a. Christianity. You see the problem here. Britain is a secular country, but the symbolic head of its government is a protector of just one religion. His appointment is based on one religion. Which brings us to another interesting episode of the coronation. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has a key role to play. He's got some reading to do. Rishi Sunak must read from the biblical book of Colossians during the coronation. Now remember, Sunak is a practicing Hindu. He took his oath of office on the Bhagavad Gita. But on Friday, he must read out from a biblical book. Is that a problem? Well, ideally, it's not. Reading other religious books will do you no harm. In fact, it may enrich your own ideas about religion. Having said that, this is not some leisure reading. This is an official obligation for a non-Christian prime minister. How is that okay in secular Britain? All these controversies bring us back to the same point. You simply cannot drag a coronation into 2023. Why? Because it runs contrary to everything that defines modern life. Children don't obey their parents nowadays. Are you really expecting them to pay allegiance to a 74-year-old king they haven't met? It's beyond bizarre. It's insulting to self-respecting citizens of Britain and don't forget the former colonies. Allegiance to the king means something very different for them. Sort of like reliving their trauma. So the royal family should stop wasting its time trying to modernize an outdated institution. There is nothing modern about golden carriages, looted jewels and thrones. Might as well revert to their 19th century strategy. We are entitled royals, just deal with it.